Hi guys, I am Yolanda, co-founder of Harper Therapy, and I am here today with one of our therapy dogs, Hobbs. He has been kind enough to allow me on the couch with him this afternoon. <laughs> but I wanted to, uh, just in an effort to support our community, we have been doing lives every day uh, with tips, um, just some thoughts about how to get through this unique situation that we find ourselves in, this pandemic, this global pandemic of uh, COVID-19 coronavirus, and the also the social distancing that we've been experiencing, and um, just the financial crisis and everything that's going on. And today I wanted to share thoughts about the psychology behind stockpiling, and just some thoughts on how to stop it. So. Here at Harper Therapy, we are experts and we specialize in uh, trauma and in anxiety. So this um, unique situation is kind of what is in our wheelhouse as far as how we help clients and how we help our community uh, kind of get through and, and cope. And so what we know is when we wrap words around a situation and we kind of talk through what our shared experience is, it gives us a different mechanism, a different platform, just different skill set to, to figure out how to navigate through it. So I think one of the primary things to keep in mind is that it is our brain's job to keep us alive. Our brain digs safety and security and certainty. Our brain does not like discomfort and uncertainty and that is just what our lived experience is right now. We are living in uncertain times um, and it just feels really wobbly and our brain does not like that. And when the brain doesn't like what the experience is, when it doesn't have this sense of safety, security, certainty, then the brain triggers the stress response, that fight, flight, freeze response um, our brain tells us either to move towards something or move away from something. We are scanning the environment for threats, for safe, not safe, for friend, foe, all of that stuff. Our, narrow, our focus narrows and we just do not have the same framework to be able to truly accurately assess the situation and come up with tools for and resources to get through. So in uncertainty our brain looks for really arbitrary measures of what certainty is and it kind of uh, uh, gives an inaccurate narrative of what's going on our brain doesn't really care about truth and facts it cares about safety and security uh, so the brain will give us an information and kind of assess uh, an arbitrary measure for certainty um, and that might look like wow, this situation feels really too uncomfortable and I must take this action to feel secure and I really need to have this many rolls of toilet paper. Sound familiar? And then as we are going out and about um, and we see shelves that are empty, it just confirms the brain's stance of like, look, this is super important to our safety and security. This is no longer a luxury. Uh, this is a, a threat to our livelihood and well-being. So we really need X amount of toilet paper. But the problem is that when we get X amount of toilet paper and things still feel wobbly and uncertain, uh, the brain just simply says, obviously we need more. And so we kind of get into that inaccurate feedback loop of, uh, well, we just need to keep going. Um, and this is not an accurate representation of what's going on. This is our brain's reptilian response to a situation. So we just stockpile more and more and more and still feel uncertain and wobbly. So here are some thoughts about how to step away from that vicious cycle um, and to take a different look at our need to gain more and more supplies. So as humans, we are higher evolved creatures than other animals. And we can intentionally 
re-engage our prefrontal cortex by taking a breath and doing some fact checking. How much toilet paper do we really need? And I'm just using the toilet paper as an arbitrary example, um, but it is one that we can all understand right now. So how much do we really need to get by during this time? And especially during a time where supply chains are still running um, and keeping in mind that the more we engage with what our brain is telling us and stockpiling, the more we actually make those things come into existence of like having bare shelves. So how do we take a breath, kind of assess, and then maybe even still take the action, but then choose to donate or choose to check in with our friends and our neighbors to say, hey, I've got some extra of this supply. Do you need something? It was the most amazing thing over the weekend. Uh, one of our neighbors was uh, going to brave going into Costco. And before he left, he said, hey, is there anything that you need? So I think that now is a good time for us to just hit the pause button and, and, and really think like one day um, this situation is going to be something, uh, an event that our grandkids read about in the history books and whatever history books look like when our grandkids <laughs> are learning history. What do we want them to be reading about? How do we carry forward our values and integrity? And how do we keep in mind that we're in this together and that we'll get through this together? Uh, it's interesting that when um, a lot of us have learned about Charles Darwin and, you know, quote unquote, the survival of the thinnest, a lot of experts really challenge that a more accurate description uh, for Darwin's theory is survival of the most cooperative. So how can we engage during this time um, as cooperative, knowing that we're in this together and that we'll get through it together? And just simply, how do we be kind and generous and carry forward those values and integrity? So we are in this together. Uh, everyone take care, uh, be well, and be nice, be kind, take care of each other. All right, so thoughts about COVID-19 from today. Just some thoughts about stockpiling and a better use of our time and resources. So if you guys have any questions or any concerns or some thoughts about some questions that we can answer on our lives, let us know. Drop some suggestions into the box. Otherwise, we will talk to you soon. Thanks.